Oh, come on, you guys. Look. High blood pressure. Yeah. High low blood, blood pressure. Okay. Right? <laughs> you tend to probably think about high more than you do low. Okay? Because that's one that's talked about a lot. When we talk about supplying blood to tissues, now remember, when I talk about tissues, I'm going to have cells All right, my cells make up <coughs> tissues, correct? Tissues make up organs, which make up organ systems, which make up the organism, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that in between our cells is my extracellular fluid. That extracellular fluid varies for, for the tissues of the body, okay? This extracellular fluid is what is fed by the blood. Okay? Because it's at this level that I'm going to get to that capillary bed. Is everybody with me? So when we talk about blood supply <coughs> to the tissues, this is what I'm referring to. All right? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so when we talk about this, we express it in flow and then perfusion. Flow, the amount. The amount at any given time. So if I'm looking at my tissue over there, my blood flow, now remember, leaves the heart and moves into those tissues. So my <coughs> flow into the tissues at any given time can be affected by my pressure and then resistance. What does resistance mean at this point? Because I'm at the point of the capillaries. And it's at the point of the capillaries that I control my blood flow. <coughs> so, when it tells me this, the resistance, it's telling me that it is dependent on the diameter of those vessels. At that level, at that level of the capillary. So, blood coming into my tissues. It is a laminar flow.
Do you remember, or do you know what laminar means? Okay. So if I have my blood vessel, the tube, okay? Remember, inner layer, middle layer, outer layer, okay? Blood is in contact with my inner layer. Laminar tells me it flows in sheets. Okay, what does that mean? We're not going to go to sheets and get a cup of coffee. Okay. It tells me that the sheet of blood that I have closest to my vessel wall is moving the slowest. But the sheet of blood towards the middle of the tube is not encountering that same resistance and it's flowing quicker. So the blood in the middle of the tube flows faster than the blood right at the wall of the vessel. <coughs> Y'all like sticker? What do you mean? Well, I meant, sorry, maybe this has nothing to do with I was saying the layer, layering. Uh, it's like a layer. Um, yeah, it's like a layer. So the I layer. I just asked didn't make any sense, sorry. But. The layer that would be closest to the wall is moving slower. The one farthest from the wall moving the fastest. Now, And actually, let me see, that brings up a good, a good point, okay? Um, I love to hear people talk about thickness of the blood. Well, it's because their blood is thick. Well, they got thin blood. Okay, thank you, Andrew, because this does not exist. When you talk about thickness of blood from this point forward, you need to signify why you're saying that. Is there a decrease in the volume of the blood? Meaning <coughs> the person could simply be dehydrated and therefore, that makes their red blood cell count high, even though there, nothing has happened to the count, just makes it seem like more red blood cells in the blood. And yes, that would be making the heartbeat harder and the flow more difficult, all right? But is that affecting whether they're hot or cold? <laughs> No, okay? You are gonna have to signify why you're saying to someone their blood is thick. Is it thick because there's not enough uh, water in it? Is it thick because there's too many red blood cells? Is it thick because there's too many of the platelets present? You need to begin to understand simply saying thick or thin blood, that is not a medical term. Okay, so from now on, do people say that to you? Why? Ask them why, why? I bet you they won't say it to you again. <laughs> so, the blood flow that's coming through this tube If it's flowing in this laminar fashion, okay, 
and we've got it slower towards the vessel, quicker towards the, the middle, this is how it's going to flow with those heartbeats, okay? So the heart will pump and it'll be pa-poom, 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 okay? So it's going to be flowing through these vessels. Getting it to the actual <laughs> tissue, to the, this cellular level, all right, it's coming in whoo, in this like sheet flow where the middle part's reaching it pretty quick, just a little teeny tiny bit of a lag on the side, and now I'm getting to my tissue. So, my blood flow. If vessels are constricted, that blood flow is not going to come into it. If the vessels are dilated, the blood's going to flow to that, that, that cell. Now, what is this term perfusion? to perfuse, to disperse. Now, this would be what is the flow in the tissue per given volume. So if I have my heart beating, and I've got a good blood supply coming to these tissues, the movement through these tissues can differ. Some of the tissues of my body have great perfusion. Some can have a good blood flow, but little perfusion. For Example, our femur, which is where, thanks for not telling me the arm, <laughs> okay, my femur bone, okay, has a great blood flow, however, per milligram of tissue, okay, the disbursement is small. So the blood flow high, perfusion small. Is that because there's more ground to cover? Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of ground to cover and because of the type of tissue that it is, being the bone tissue, Okay, um, and then, you know, in a lot of cases, it's making blood cells. So then, if we think about the ovary, tiny, okay, blood flow, good, all right, good blood flow to it, not as great as the blood flow you see with the femur, but I still got a good blood flow, okay? But the perfusion, huge. So throughout that tiny little organ, blood flow, mm -hmm, okay. But the actual movement of it through the tissues of it, huge. Wouldn't that also partially be because of like the actual tissue, like in the bone, if you're going to compact the bone, you have to go through all like the Right, that's what I was saying. Because of the tissue type. Okay? Because you know, like it being bone tissue versus actual soft tissues that you find in the ovary. So the <coughs> the blood flow does not have to match the perfusion. Can they go? They can. Mm -hmm. So depending on the tissues and 
depending upon how active it might be. So what do you mean? It doesn't have to match the fever. Okay. That blood flow to my finger is high, but I didn't have to have high perfusion. The blood flow to the ovary, yeah, it's okay, but the perfusion of it was huge. Is there, so like what would an example be where it's kind of like one? Where it's going to match? All right, keep that because I think Lucy's got the same question. No, I was just going to say, so like the blood can just be coming through, but it's not dispersing to other areas quickly. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Now, a time that it might match. You're doing vigorous exercise and your skeletal muscles have a high demand. The blood flow would be high and the perfusion through those tissues would be high. So it would depend on what is the tissue and what is the demand. And that varies throughout the entire body. They do not have to match, okay? They can vary. There's actually an area of study for blood flow termed chemodynamics, and it deals with those physical pressures. This is getting into those equations that I really don't want you to deal with. All right? Now, what it does tell us, the greater the pressure difference, the greater the flow. So, the greater the pressure difference, the greater the flow, pressures, okay, high pressures, all right, we're going to have a lot of movement into those tissues. The resistance, if my resistance is based on the diameter of the vessel, if the diameter is open, we got a good flow. But if it's constricted, that flow is restricted. So pressures, <coughs> the flow, okay, are gonna be factors that affect our blood flows, our blood pressures that occur. Your textbook, okay, going to give you this equation that looks like it's this long, all right, and then you can actually take numbers, plug those numbers in based on tests and everything else that can be done, and you can determine information about a person's blood flow, pressure, and resistance, okay? Now, you were going to go into being cardiovascular surgeon, you would definitely need to know these, all right? However, the biggest way that you all are going to come across this information is how it's going to be clinically significant for you, and that means for a lot of you, and you probably, some of you probably already do this, you take a blood pressure. Any of you ever done that? 